But if you are a follower of Christ and you're not reading your Bible, how do you know what Jesus is? Welcome to day five of this philosophy cleanse detox that we've been doing together. Uh, today is really the linchpin of the entire concept and what we were building towards. And I told you at the beginning that I was hoping to invite you to read the New Testament with us uh, this summer. It's called Same Page Summer uh, from the Bible Reading Challenge. We would love to have you join us. But there's a reason that this actually connects to everything that I have said up until this point. So the first day is about Jesus is actually all of that. But if you are a follower of Christ and you're not reading your Bible, how do you know what Jesus is? You're not listening to what he said, how he revealed himself to us. One of the things that has been so delightful in the years through doing the Bible reading challenge has been coming alongside of believers who do not have habitual Bible reading, they don't have any Bible reading plan, they don't have any habit, they don't have, but they feel guilty about it, and encouraging them to be reading the Word. And one of the things that's come up over and over is people who actually love Jesus, but don't know Jesus as he has revealed himself to us. They've been relying on sort of a telephone game of people telling them who Jesus is. And so reading his word is a way of coming to know him as he revealed himself to us. And it has been so wonderful to do this alongside people who in many instances are sort of meeting Jesus as he introduced himself for the first time. They're meeting him in his own words. And, and you'll hear that in women saying like, this isn't the Jesus I knew. Like, this isn't what I knew, and yet it's his word. So that's why it's important to the first thing. The second thing is that you aren't all that. I wanna just say when it comes to Bible reading, uh, all of our reasons, all of the things that keep us from the word are actually very small. The enemy has had very little trouble keeping us from the word. It's just a few little, I mean, dumb obstacles. Like if you're not gonna do it perfectly, don't bother doing it. Or uh, you messed up, so now you're such a bad Bible reader. We, we're so vulnerable to accusations, we're vulnerable to distractions, we're vulnerable to all kinds of things. And so in putting your obstacles in an appropriate light is to see them as very little compared to what, what the word has to offer you. Now, of course, the third day was about your doctrine actually meets your real life. Uh, when you read the word, that is you in submission to the word of God, the spirit works on you. The spirit makes changes in your life that you could never have masterminded. We come in submission to the word and we are ourselves changed in the reading of it. Then when it comes to day four, my point that I hope you will all take to heart is that you are not alone. You're part of the body of Christ. And as part of the body of Christ, one of the Christian duties that we all have is together to eat the word, to come to the table, to consume what God has given us for our edification and to be equipped for the good works that he's prepared for us to walk in. One problem that many Christians have is that you think that your spiritual life is about, it is like this super narrow, super isolated, this is me and God. Essentially, my entire spiritual life could fit into a very small prayer closet where I go and I commune with God, but it's all about me, it's working on me, there's no table fellowship there because I'm not opening my eyes to look at the body of Christ. So one of the things that we have encouraged in the Bible Reading Challenge is to share this table, to think of it that not only are we guests that don't deserve to be at this table, but our Lord, the one who laid this table, whose own body and blood is this table, he's called us to invite others, to go out into the, into the country, to be like, find those people that can come to this feast. Invite people to share this with us because there is never going to be a shortage of food here. The more people that come to the word, the more we can all uh, enjoy this table fellowship around the wonderful things that God has provided us. So I hope that you will join us as we read the New Testament this summer together, uh, as we experience the wonderful thing that is many thousands of Christians the whole world over coming day to day to the same passages of scripture to put ourselves under them, be changed by the spirit and enjoy the fellowship of the body. Hope you'll join us.